أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين Okay I'll come back to you for discussing principle number 10 in Islamic educational system or in Islamic training system principle number 10 Educationalists, teachers, and trainers need to keep in mind Islamically that in their policy making, in their planning, and in their scheduling, always they are in need of priorities. Keeping in mind the priorities in planning and policy making. As you may remember in explaining and defining the Islamic foundations in education, I told you that human life span according to Islamic teachings is not confined is not limited just to this world, whatever be. 100 years, 200 years, 300 years, 40 years, whatever. Human lifespan is not confined, is not limited to life in this world. This is number one. Human life is divided into two parts, temporary and permanent. Temporary in this world and permanent in hereafter. This is number two. Number three, human goals, aims and targets, whether consciously or unconsciously, whether willingly or unwillingly, Human aims, targets, and purposes could be divided vertically into three types, three sorts. Aims, which are immediate and direct for our efforts, for our conducts, Aims and targets, which are medium and moderate, they come in between. And aims and targets, which come ultimately and finally. I mean final, ultimate goals. This is number three. Number four, learners, trainees and students are indeed something which are given to us or which we have access to them as trust, amana. So, if this is a fact that learners and trainees are the trust, trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, given to us and we have access to them, then we need to treat them in a very careful, reliable, planned way. The interest, the goodness of these learners, these trainees, these subjects of training and education are different. Some are very important very crucial, very critical, some are, are normal. Therefore, collecting all these together, we come up with one understanding and result. And what is that? In our programming, in our planning, in our scheduling, 
And in our policy making, we need always to go by priorities. Prioritization of the avenue. It's not the case that all we do, all we provide, all we afford are at the same level. Of course, they are different. So, if we expect students to come up with a qualified education, qualified skill, qualified outcome, educational outcome, and if we expect them to come up with perfection and qualification, always we have to go by prioritization. Always we need to keep in mind priorities. So the tax we afford, the program we provide, the treatment that we do, the environment that we create, the policy that we put into practice, in all these efforts, we need to keep and hold the principle of priority. Sometimes it may happen that there could be a type of contact and clash between social and individual interest, public and personal interest. What could we do here? The clash and contact between two types of interest and goodness. Here we need the criterion of priority. And we all know that the criterion of priority is vertical pattern. It's a vertical scale. When we want to evaluate, we need to look at the different levels of the interest and goodness and qualification of the learners and trainees. Priorities. Prioritization of the interest, of the goodnesses, of the qualifications is due to vertical evaluation. Vertical evaluation of what? Of interest and also vertical evaluation of values. We could come up with two different values in our policy making or in programming. But we always need to take the higher level of the values. So, in curriculum planning, in policy making, and scheduling the program of training and education, we need to give the priority to those subjects, to those texts, to those materials, which could provide the prosperity, perfection, and goodness of the learners in hereafter, in other world. Therefore, subjects like Islamic ideology, Islamic theology, Islamic ethics, Islamic values education, always keep the priority. These types of subjects, always they keep the priority. So, principle number 10 in educational planning is what? Principle of priority. Principle number 11. Although in our curriculum planning and in our educational programming, we could give the priority to Islamic ideology, Islamic ethics, Islamic values, education, and things like that, 
we also need to provide and to have educational planning which provides knowledge and qualification in basic knowledge, natural knowledge, humanities and social sciences because they are going to be educated to live in this society and our society is in need of different qualifications and different skills. So educating students with different qualifications is in need of having curriculum, planning and preparing materials which enable and empower students with different types of qualifications and skills. As you may remember, I told you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in this world for the aim of perfection. And that perfection cannot be arrived at except through social life. We human beings are not able to live in the corner, are not able to live individually isolated from the society, from the social works, social relationships. We need to live in a society. We need to live with people. We are in need of exchange. All we get, all we take is due to all we give. So it's a process of give and take. It's a business. Since we human beings need to live socially and in the society, all types of growth, perfection and realizations of the potentialities, even in terms of faith, ideology and ethics, they are all possible if we live in a society, if we live with the people, if social life is a necessity for all of us, is that we need to give a part, a share. Living socially, living publicly is due to whatever you take, you have to share, you have to give something in return. So when people come together, they need to help one another in order to be able to have a relaxable, qualified life. Therefore, having a qualified life, having facilities, is in need of different skills, different abilities, different qualifications. And we are not able to come up with qualifications and skills unless we go through a pre-planned educational system which could enable us, empower us with different types of qualifications, different types of skills, different types of abilities. If I am using, consuming social welfare, social qualifications, social qualities, then in return I have to afford something. And this return is in need of skill, is in need of my personal individual qualification. And this qualification is due to having a qualified education, a qualified training. Therefore, to enjoy a qualified life, to enjoy a well-established, powerful, strong social life, to enjoy particularly for the Muslim societies, to enjoy independence and to have a 
type of prosperous social life is in need of having qualified human resources. Educating, training, qualified human resources is due to have a qualified educational planning, which not only empower us with faith, ideology, religiosity, ethics, and values education, but also empower us, enable us with qualifications, skills, which could provide the best form of qualifications for social life. Therefore, Islamic educational planning, Islamic curriculum planning, Islamic educational and training policy making is in need of two main parts. A part for values education and a part for skill and qualifications. For example, including natural science, including engineering, including medical science, including computer science, including humanities and social sciences. These are all a part of a complete, comprehensive Islamic educational planning. We need to keep in mind, when we talk about Islamic educational planning, we are not confining ourselves just to values education and education about religious ideology and things like that. Of course, it, it must be a part. And sometimes priority is given to this. But at the same time, being powerful, being independent, being developed, being industrialized, having voice in a multicultural society is in need of being qualified, powerful, based on engineering, medical science, humanities, social science, computer science, artificial intelligence, and all types of other subjects, which are the requirement for having a qualified social life. Qualification of social life is due to including all these subjects. Therefore, in our educational planning, we need to be very careful to think about the needs, the gaps, opportunities, possibilities, threats, and matching, and being very careful for the needs and schedule planning to be compatible. Needs and schedule planning. Needs and curriculum planning. Needs and gaps on one side and curriculum planning on the other side. They need to come together and being compatible. Therefore, taking into our account the conditions of age, individual differences based on mental, emotional, motivational requirements, we need to come up with curriculum planning, training, physical education, values education, ideological education, a general level, special level, a specialized subject, they are all must put together to come up 
with a real promising and working educational planning. Therefore, policymakers, planners, and those who come to be the putting the theories into practice, all the workers of the educational system need to think that their planning must be comprehensive, putting together needs, gaps, and curriculum, and always, always the conditions and the situations of the subject, and beyond all of these, the very final target of this subject. All curriculum planning and educational planning must prepare, must pave the way of moving toward nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and become a godlike citizen, educating and training a godlike citizen is the final and ultimate target in educational planning. Therefore, whether informal, subformal, and informal educational planning, we need move forward, we need to plan, we need to program, we need to schedule in a way that we motivate we motivate divine motivation, values motivation, eradication of negligence, helping, enabling students and the learner to distance from selfishness, to be distanced from being overwhelmed with material world, we need to empower students to be able to fight against their wishes. Fight against their selfishness. Fight against their arrogance. And at the same time they come up with qualification in all needed aspects. Therefore, we need to keep in mind that first in immediate goals, then we need to think about middle goals, and finally we move, we enable students and learners to move through all these stages, immediate goals, middle goals, in a way that they still are on the way of moving toward perfection and nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is principle number 11. I have more about one remaining principle, principle number 12, that I'll talk to you in my next session. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.